In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Go Router in your Flutter app for routing. And I'll be using the last bottle game as an example here. But this concept would work with any Flutter app. To get started, we're gonna be installing Go Router. And we can do that with the command here, Flutter Pub add Go Router. And we'll just go back over to the terminal and add that in. This will obviously add that package to our pubspec.yaml and then we could run Flutter Pub get. The next thing we're going to do is create a file to store all the routes that we're going to have in this app. In the lib here, we can add a new file and we'll just call this the router. And now in here, we're going to create a function that will return a Go router instance. And we can just call this Go router. And then within here, we'll just return our Go router. There'll be a few parameters that we need to give to this. First though, let's make sure we have the package imported. And we'll start by giving it an initial location. And the initial location will be a string value, which is essentially gonna be what the location will be in our, in our browser, if you open this in the browser. So we'll just go with a backslash, which is a typical initial location. But as you test, this could be useful to change around and make the app load on a different page. The next thing will be the routes themselves. So this is going to be a list of routes and it's actually going to be a route base type. Within this list now we can create a route and the first one will just be for the game itself. So we'll create a go route and then for the path here we can call this the game and then we can also give this a name so it'll have a named route and right now we'll just also call this the game as a string. And the last thing we need to do is tell this route where it should go. So for that, we will be using a builder. And then from here, we can just return a constant value of the actual widget, which is this game widget, which in my case, if we go to the app right now, we can see what we are loading, which is going to be the game app. So we'll just put the game app here. And now when we go to the game, it will be the game app. We will need to import this. So we aren't actually using the Go router and we're going to need to change up the way our app is loaded to actually use the Go router instead. So if we look right now how the game app is set up, which this is what's essentially called from main. So we have our main, which is calling the, the game app. And then the game app is just this stateful widget, which is basically loading up a scaffold with the game widget. That's what you're seeing over here. This is good, but we, want to be able to use go router and not have this whole scaffold tied to the material apps home so to change this we're actually going to create a new file and move all of this functionality over here which is going to be kind of the game screen into its own file and then we'll update our game app state so we can add this new file into the game itself and i'll just call this the game screen and if we actually just copy everything from the game app, we can go ahead and modify it. So instead of the game app, it's going to be the game screen. And a lot of this will basically be the same, but instead of having this material app here with the home, we're just going to only return the scaffold. And this is good. We now want to take this game screen and actually change our, our route here to be the game screen instead of the game app. Because the game app is now going to become kind of our high level app that uses Go Router. So now within the game app, we can keep it a stateful widget, but we aren't going to need the game. And we also aren't going to need the init state. We could also remove this home element and now it's kind of just going to be this material app. So let's remove all of this stuff. And it's much simpler now. It's just a material app. But this isn't actually going to work right now. We need to add the Go Router routing. So let's go ahead and define the Go Router here, which is just going to equal our router here from Go Router. And of course, we can't name this Go Router. So we'll just call this the router. And then we should be able to import our go router function which is just defined right here now we can use this router and we'll change our material app here to be material app dot router now in here we can add a router config 
and just pass it that router. And if we save this and rerun the app, all right, and when this loads up, you'll actually see we have an error here. And this is actually expected because we gave this the path of game, but we have our initial location set to slash. There are a few ways that this could be handled. One is that we could just make the game always our default and have this path be the game. And then you'll see this will work. The other is kind of just to do the opposite and make our initial location the game. Since we don't have this fully built out yet, we can leave it like this, but this initial location will ultimately become something different. So we're going to change this and add another page so we can navigate between them. So within our lib here, let's create a new file. And this is going to be in a folder called views. And then we'll call this the menu screen. And this will just be a simple stateful widget. And we can give it a scaffold. Okay, so I updated this to just be a simple scaffold that should say main menu. And it has a button which currently doesn't have the action set up, but it will just say start game. So let's get this loading up first, and then we can add this on pressed. Again, this is called menu screen. So if we go back into our router, we're gonna create a new route and this will just be for the menu. And then the name can also be menu. And then here we're going to be using the menu screen. And now we can set the menu to be the initial location. And if we save this, you'll see we get that menu set up there. I'll just center that button quickly. And now to redirect, what we could do is just do context.go and then give it the location. So since we wanna to go to the game right here, we can give it the location of this by the name. And instead of using just go, we would use go named, and then we would pass it that string of game. And this will work. So if we rerun this, you'll see we have this. And if we click start game, we'll get into the game. And that's good, but this is a little brittle using these strings here. So we can update our router to use an enum and then basically use that enum value to redirect. So here we'll create an enum and this will be our app route. And within this type now we can give each of our types as an enum value. So the first one can be the menu and then we can have the game. And now to update these, we basically will use these enum values within the name here. So we'll do app route dot game dot name, and then kind of the same thing, but we'll be doing this for the menu. And now what we can do is use this same menu here when we are redirecting. The main benefit of this, if you use it throughout your whole app, is that you're never gonna have the situation where you write go named and put some value here, which is not an actual route value. So you're gonna know that if you're using an app route value that it should be essentially set up based on one of these. It's not 100% perfect because of course you can have an extra value up here that you don't have a route for, but it's a better way than just using strings throughout. And now that we have this, we can hit start game, which actually this is wrong. This needs to go to the game, not to the menu. So once we are here, we would hit this and now we go to the game. I'm going to quickly create another screen. This can just be a stateless widget. And it's basically going to have the same thing as the menu screen here. I'll just change a couple of the values. The other screen can redirect back to the menu screen. And it will be, it'll just say menu. And then I'm going to change this to go to the other screen. So we'll be going back and forth between these, uh, the menu screen and the other screen. Now I'm gonna change this to other, and now you can see this doesn't work because I don't have that route set up. But if we go back here and add another one for other, you can see that now works. Of course, we do need to actually make the route. So I'll copy the menu one and then just make this the other screen. And we also need to call other there. So now if we rerun this, it's a little bit of a simplified version. On the main menu, you can go to the other screen and then from the other screen, you can go to the menu screen. So one thing you'll notice is the animation here from the main menu to the other screen, it's going to be a swipe over and that's the default animation with this builder. So if we wanna change that, we can change the builder of the other screen and make it a pop up from the bottom. Instead of using the builder, we're going to be using the page builder. So I'll comment that out and then use the page builder here, which allows us to actually use a material page. 
and the material page then will take the child of that other screen. But since we are using a material page, we can pass in that full screen dialog as true. And if we do this and rerun it now, when we are on the main menu, if we click the other, we get the screen popping up from the bottom. So this is nice if you want a different type of animation. And you can see we're kind of just going back and forth with these. The other thing to notice is that these are not actually being popped on top of each other. So if, for instance, we kept this as the, as the other screen where it's sliding over to the right, typically when you do this, if you're on iOS, you can kind of swipe back with the, since these are both in a scaffold, you could normally can swipe back. But the reason you can't do that is because we're using the go named instead of the push named. So if you change this to push named, if you change this to push named from the main menu, what that's going to do is actually push the new screen on top. So if you do that, you'll see the back button is here. You can swipe back or use the back button. Now, since the menu button is still using go named, you would push this and it's actually going to make this the only view now. So there's no swiping back. If you did push named for both of them, then what that would do is just continue to push on top. So you're going to push to the other screen and then you'll push the menu and you can go back to the other screen and then back to the menu. So this is something that you definitely would want to be careful with because if you were navigating between screens like this, you'll see this is an awful experience because you would keep going back to the screen that you were just on. So we'll keep this with go named, but that's basically the difference between go named and push named. And those are going to be the two most common that you use. But then back in the router, of course, if you do keep the, the page builder using the full screen dialog, when you hit this, then it's going to be the, the full screen coming up from the bottom. And if you did want that X to be there, it's the same thing. You would just be using the push named instead of the go named. And then if you are on the main menu and you push up, it will allow you to close that the same way. The last example I want to show you is how you can have this happen with no animation at all if you just want to go to the next page with no transition. And we're still going to be using the page builder, but instead of using a material page, we're going to actually use a no transition page. And then we'll remove that full screen dialog and we'll just pass in that value. So now if we go to the other screen, it should just change kind of instantly. And you see really the only thing that's changing is the, the button because it is, uh, of course, no animation. So it just changes. This could be useful depending on what portion of your app you are developing and if you actually want an animation or not. There's other animations you can add. You can also build a custom animation, but I think the, the most popular ones are definitely going to be the default, which you saw is kind of the swiping the pop up from the bottom and then a no transition at all. So that's going to be it for this video. This was kind of an overview of Go Router and how to add it to your Flutter app. In the next video, I'll be talking a bit more specifically about using it with a flame game. Mm -hmm.